Welcome to this week's episode of Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Wednesday, October 17th, 2012. We begin with a story from the world of biology. Here on Brainstorm, we talk a lot about regenerative medicine. Certainly, conventional medicine is great, but it doesn't change the fact that on a biological level, humans kind of suck at regeneration. Starfish can be cut in half and just turn into two starfish. Certain amphibians and reptiles regrow tails and other limbs. Humans and other mammals, on the other hand, generally form scar tissue in response to a serious injury. So a question was, did mammals simply lose the capability for extreme regeneration, or was it just a dormant somewhere in our genetics? There's hope for the latter option, starting with a particular strain of lab mice called Murphy Roth's Large. These mice actually lack a certain gene and are able to heal small holes in their ears and regrow toe tips. It gets better because a team from the University of Florida have been studying African spiny mice. In the wild, they were known to detach their tails when attacked and had a tendency to lose skin. Generally, losing skin isn't a good thing, but the mice seem to recover from it just fine. It's actually a defense mechanism they can use to slip away from predators. Their larger hair follicles leave less room for connective tissue between the skin and body. Surviving that kind of damage requires some impressive regenerative ability. To test this, the scientists made small cuts and made four millimeter holes in the ears of the mice. Both healed quickly and completely with minimal scar tissue. Although no muscle was regrown, a variety of cell types like skin, fat, and hair formed normal tissue to repair damage. Examining the ear wounds showed patches of immature cells that would grow and differentiate during the healing process. This was similar to structure salamanders form when regrowing limbs. Study of the African spiny mice may help scientists unlock the regenerative potential of other mammals, hopefully advancing human medicine in the process. Next is an update from the world of biotechnology, specifically synthetic biology. If you're wondering what synthetic biology is, it's essentially biotechnology but with additional engineering principles like standardization and abstraction. Researchers can take characterized genetic components and construct novel devices using living cells. With this method, some amazing things are possible, such as bacteria that react to light, forming photographs. Unfortunately, these genetic circuits have also been quite limited. They're all based on genes, which produce proteins. Some proteins react to other molecules and or activate other genes in the circuit. The difficulty is finding components that don't interfere with each other especially as the circuits get more complex. That issue might be resolved, thanks to a team at MIT that recently created the most complex genetic circuit to date by integrating four different molecular sensors. In order to do this, they needed some new components and actually turned to the bacteria that causes salmonella. They have a tightly regulated mechanism for injecting proteins into human cells. A promoter section of DNA gets turned on by an activator protein, which can need a chaperone protein to bind to the promoter. Sixty variations of this mechanism were found in other bacteria, and the related genes were put through guided evolution to ensure no cross-interference. With these new components, the team made the aforementioned four-molecule sensor and planned to create similar circuits in yeast. Other synthetic biology researchers will find many uses for these new genetic components, as well as the methods used to create them. Our final story comes from the world of physics. There are many mysteries in physics, some that can't be explained by our current framework for quantum mechanics, called the Standard Model. German scientists have suggested new methods for detecting particles beyond the Standard Model, particularly low-mass ones. Some exotic particles are theorized to be extremely massive and difficult to detect because they only exist at high energies. Similarly, an entire class of particles could exist with very little mass, difficult to detect because of how weakly they couple or interact with normal matter. One of these theoretical particles are called mini-charged particles, MCPs for short, and detecting them would help physicists refine their models. Currently, the best method for doing this requires what's known as tunneling of the third kind, but we should probably cover tunneling in general first. Standard quantum mechanical tunneling is when a quantum particle passes through a barrier it wouldn't normally because of the uncertainty principle. In the second kind of tunneling, something like a photon strongly interacts with a barrier it can't normally pass through, 
so it turns into a particle that can pass through before turning back into a photon on the other side of the barrier. Tunneling of the third kind is essentially the same, except the photon becomes a pair of virtual particles in order to pass through, and this was discovered in 2009. If the virtual particles are MCPs, the probability of tunneling would be increased by a magnetic field. So a setup would be pretty simple, light shining on a barrier inside a magnetic field with a photon detector on the other side. If these experiments are successful in finding many charged particles, they could be further analyzed by changing the properties of light used. It's extremely exciting because this would be increasing evidence for an entirely new class of particles to study. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.